Alif is not working as the long vowel. Okay? So, I am writing two different words for you also where you can distinguish between Alif that is the long vowel and the Alif that is, is the consonant. So, if you are writing the word Kitab, in the word Kitab, Alif, it comes in the middle of the word. So, this is the long vowel over here. Okay? But in the word Ism, Alif is in the beginning of the word, then it is called Hamza. And this Alif is not the long vowel, it is a consonant. So that means the Alif is never actually a, a consonant or, or actually a, a letter. It's just it's just the placeholder for the sound, either for the Hamza sound or a double uh, to Fatah sound. Yes. So it is not uh, full-fledged, complete letter by itself, Alif, yes, so you let me ask right. you this question, how did, when, you, when we write Allah, mm -hmm. we use Alif and yes. Muhammad, right? Yes. So where, what is the, what is, what is Alif is doing there? Okay, very good. You can find your answer from the same discussion that we did right now. Think about, pay attention to the sound in the beginning, A. Uh. Okay? So when it's beginning with the A sound, that is so Hamza. Hamza. Okay. It is not Alif. We is always read Alif, Lam, Alif, type like Yes, that. yes. But that Alif, uh, it is actually Hamza, Hamza because it's in the beginning of the word and over there is a consonant. Okay. So, uh, now go on this page number, next page. And someone can, if can read quickly. So, every information over here will be clear. And if you have any question, you can ask. You would like to read, inshallah? Okay. Page, uh, from the start. Page 16, 66. Uh, letters and sounds, part one. Hmm. In this unit, you will learn about the second function of alif and the next four consonants in the alphabet. All of these consonants are non-connectors, that is, they do not connect to the following letter. You will also learn how to say and write a new road, zero to ten, and practice introducing people to others. Okay. So all these three topics of today, they are mentioned over here in this paragraph. Now, one more thing that the four alphabet that we are going to learn today, they are non-connectors. So again, take out your notebook, your baskets, two baskets, right? Mm -hmm. Connecting and non-connecting and put them right away. Okay. So that you should not make mistake when you are writing Arabic. Uh, never connect them with the following letters. And these are four. Dal, Dal, Ra, and Za. Okay? So, write, uh, put them right now in your list of non-connecting letters. And maintain this notebook. It should be with you every Sunday. So, how, how do you say they are non-connecting? Because when we use, like, Mohandas, you just said, like, we, we connect the Dal with the previous... Previous letter. letter. That yeah. is the definition yeah. of the non-connecting letter. Okay. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Backwards. Very good. Uh, you would like to read, inshallah, next paragraph? Uh, okay, let me try. Okay. <coughs> uh, in Unit 3, you learned that wow and ya yeah sometimes function as consonants representing the sounds W and Y. They function this way whenever they are at the beginning of a word. Ask in the, uh, in the words wajib and ya. Yes. So the word wajib, wow is in the beginning. So that's why this wow is a consonant, is not the long vowel. Mm -hmm. And the word uh, ya, ya yeah. means like when we are. Oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, let, let me ask a question. You just said the Hamza need a seat or uh -huh. a chair, right? Uh -huh. And you said wow and ya and alif. So here is also actually helping as a, uh, it's a consonant, but it's actually a Hamza. That this, no, no, no. Wow and Ya, they are not uh, like for, Alif. Okay. Yeah, they are not seat for Hamza. Yeah, they are by themselves the consonant. Okay. They don't, they, they do not go with the Hamza. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have also learned several words that begin with vowel sounds, such as Ism and Akbar. Mm -hmm. But you also know that a short vowel cannot be written on its own. It must be written on a consonant. Okay, hold on. You remember I showed you mm -hmm. that the word ism is starting with vowel sound, e. 
kasra sound but vowel cannot be written by itself hmm. it needs a consonant that you put this uh, vowel on that hmm. yes okay um, <coughs> this uh, problem is solved with uh, okay. okay let me write. to write ism we cannot use ya because that would result in a y sound ism ism yes i found some people making this mistake okay they say that if uh, this e sound needs something so we can bring ya mm. and they write ism like this okay mm. now this is totally wrong word because ya when if ya coming in the beginning so as we learned last sunday that ya becomes a consonant and it is not the word that we want we want the word ism that means name yes. and ism is something else yes, yes. um this problem is is solved with a consonant called hamza yes very good okay ha continue mm -hmm. hamza is not a vowel but rather like other consonants it is a carrier of vowel sounds okay it's very important to know this difference to remember this difference that hamza is not a consonant but it is a carrier of vowel hmm is a carrying that kasra sound yes it is a sound you make in english all the time every time you say a word that begins with a vowel in fact but you do not recognize it as a consonant because english has no letter for it very good it's very interesting and this is another point that emphasizing on the richness of arabic language this hamza sound we have in english mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but in Eng english does not provide us any separate model, any separate letter for the sound of hamza mm -hmm. how we do a ham hamza in english so all these five vowels that we have in english if you speak if you pronounce any word with any vowel in the beginning you have the hamza sound for example you have the word out that is start with o out right mm -hmm. so pay attention to the beginning of sound a mm -hmm. out the mm -hmm. beginning of out a that is the hamza sound mm -hmm. it's a glottal stop right mm -hmm. say uh, in in english you have the word if if say if, if. that is starting with i uh, yeah. and in the beginning is e e is hamza sound yeah right mm -hmm. you say up using the letter u mm -hmm. up, up. Uh, 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 uh. in the beginning a uh. mm -hmm. that is also hamza sound so in all five vowels you see the hamza sound is there that is actually a glottal stop but there is no letter in english mm -hmm. and arabic is so rich so complete that is providing you a separate symbol for the sound that is known as hamza yes mm. continue yeah but you do not recognize it as a consonant because english has no letter for it mm. in linguistic terminology this sound is called a glottal stop mm. say o oh, several times and pay attention to the sound you make in between the two syllables mm. you make the same sound when you pronounce any word that begins with a vowel such as our if it i on up hmm. say these words out loud and pay attention to the catch in your in your throat hmm. as you pronounce the the first vowel hmm. this sound is not written in english with which treats these words as if they begin they began with a vowel in arabic however this sound is considered to be a consonant mm. remember in arabic no word or syllable begins with a vowel yes no word in arabic or no syllable can be begin with a vowel it has to be a consonant in the beginning mm. in arabic yes what sounds to english speakers like an arabic word that begins with a vowel is actually a word that begins with hamza okay very good 
So that was the whole definition of Hamza, right? Yeah. Now we have a historical background of Hamza also. So this is uh, from our own writing of the Quran. As you know that in the beginning, when the Quran was written, there was no markers in the Quran, right? Yeah. No nukta on the Quran. And it was the Makkan dialect, because that was the dialect of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quraysh. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed the Quran in the dialect of Quraysh. So, Hamza was not developed at that time. So, when the earlier Quran was written at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it was compiled first time at the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and later on it was also compiled and distributed by Sayyidina Uthman, the third uh, Khalifa, uh, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hamza was not there. But when Hajjaj bin Yusuf he put all these uh, markers, the pronunciation markers. At that time, the, this symbol of Hamza also was developed. Okay. So you can, Sister Sadia, you can read that paragraph. When a word begins with Hamza, it is always written on an Aleph seat. No, I think oh, for, no, from for, for, historic reasons. Reasons. for historic okay. reasons. For historic reasons that involve Quranic spelling, Hamza has no place of its own in the alphabet. Tradition holds that the dialect of Mecca, which the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ spoke, did not have this sound. Therefore, it was not written when the Quran was first recorded in script. The symbol for the Hamza was developed along with the short vowel markings at a later date or later date. This is why Hamza has several different spellings, depending on its position in the word and the vowel sound surrounding it. In this unit, you will learn two common spellings: um, Hamza. Say hey, Alif Hamza. Alif Hamza and Hamza. We will present the other spellings in Unit 8. In most transliteration systems, including ours, Hamza is represented by an apostrophe. Hmm. So whenever you are writing Arabic word that includes Hamza sound, then you make apostrophe symbol that will tell you that there is a Hamza. Okay, continue please. When a word begins with Hamza, it is always written on an Aleph seat. Hmm. In everyday print and handwriting, initial Hamza is usually written on top of the Aleph that carries or represents it. Thus, thus initial Hamza may appear as an Aleph or as an Aleph Hamza. The combination Aleph Hamza is called Aleph Hamza. Remember, Aleph at the beginning of a word is always a seat for Hamza, never a long vowel. Since Hamza is a consonant, it takes a vowel or sukun. You will see and hear examples of Aleph Hamza with Fata in listening exercise one. Okay, very good. So, when it comes to the Hamza, using in any Arabic word, it has three situations. One situation is that Hamza should have any vowel in the beginning. It can be with Fatha, Hamza and Fatha. It could be Hamza, I mean Hamza and Dhamma, like U sound. And it could be Hamza and Kasra, E sound. Also, Hamza can be in the middle of the word or in the end of the word. Okay, so in the beginning, in the middle, or in the end. So we have few Arabic words over here that you can see the position of Hamza in different middle and end and the beginning. Okay, someone should uh, read Arabic first Arabic word over here. Mm, yes. Akhawat. No, the first. Okay, okay, yes. You are starting from here. Akhawat. Very good. Yes. Everyone can read it? Say Akhawar. Akhawar. Okay. Those who know it, don't tell me the meaning. I'm asking those who do not know, try your guess about this word Akhawar. Yeah, it's a plural of Ukht. Very good. Ukht. Yes, the word Ukht. And Ukht means? Sister. Sister. So the singular will be oh, like that. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. You will find this word in the Quran also. Allah SWT has used for sisters, akhawat. Okay. Now, second word from the sister side, Arabic. Ab. Ab means? Father. Father. Ab is father, yes. Then third word from the last row. Sabah. Ah, Sabah, yes. Sabah. This is the name of a city in Yemen. Hmm. Then 
the fourth word again from sister side ta-ata. yes very good ta-ata. Ta-ata. this is a verb ta-ata. do you have any idea of the meaning okay <laughs> those people who have a struggle in reading a struggle in reading of any language and especially muslims those who learn the quran they are having difficulty in the beginning reading the quran so this uh, process when you are not fluent in reading that is called ta'ata okay and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has used this word in the hadith in the very beautiful hadith subhanallah so much encouragement we got by rasul sallallahu in this hadith he said those people who can read quran fluently they will be in the company of angels and malaika so he just finished over here but for those he said who are struggling in the quran they have double rewards double rewards because of reading the quran and because of their struggle that they are doing for reading the quran so he used this word ta'ata so he said falahu ajaran they have two re- two rewards so no one should be hesitating from reading the quran because he cannot read or she cannot read no you put your efforts and seek double rewards from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you you always the babies start walking is it you call that ta'ata uh, yes those uh, babies those who cannot speak complete words and they are struggling to say that is our call ta'ata yes. how do you use in sentence okay like uh, ta'ata this is a third you know uh, verb for the form he did that then you will say ta'ata and it has the conjugation okay ta'ata ta'ata u ta'ata at like that and the last word bas bas hmm. means no problem no problem yes la you have to say la also before la bas means no problem and this is a way of moroccan people of people from morocco north africa side if you ask them how are you kayf al hal right they say la bas <laughs> la bas and like ana bi khair so their little meaning no problem uh, alhamdulillah i have no problem la bas so bas means problem yeah bas means problem Okay. So how do we differentiate like if it's if it's an alif or hamza like mm. if it's uh, suppose it's uh, it's alif it's bas mm. and if it's hamza it's bas bas with with the jerk with the catch in your throat glottal stop bas and with alif bas so we connect the alif with bas bas no no we you cannot connect it because alif is a non connecting so you cannot connect in the writing and you pronounce bas okay and there is another word bas with alif then you will pronounce it differently with alif so in writing mm-hmm. if you are using this word bas uh-huh. without all these uh, markers, vowel, markers uh-huh. then hamza will be there or no it will not be there you have a choice either so reading a book uh uh-huh. mm-hmm. so like you said there are two words bas uh-huh. and bas yes so for if you are in that advanced level then you can recognize by the context okay by the context that uh, this word over here i should read bas or bas okay okay it comes with the in the context context okay. yes but hamza will not be there in it advanced may be or may not be yes ha uh-huh. okay so then you have a drill that you will do at home so in this drill you will hear 12 words and sub you sometimes the one word has the hamza sometimes the word does not have the hamza so it is your job to determine that the word that you heard it has the hamza or not okay so for yes you will circle yes for no you will circle no then listening exercise number 2 that is the following exercise all the words that are here in arabic they are starting with hamza only fatha okay hamza and fatha only the combination 
So read uh, someone from the first word in Arabic. Listening exercise number two. Ab. Ab. Yes. Same word that we had earlier. Ab means brother. Yes. Father. Father. Yes, father. I am sorry. Change it. Oh, God. He is also a brother in Islam. Yes. Atat. Atat. Okay. Atat is the verb. Okay. It is the past tense uh, for feminine. When you want to say she came, she came, then you say atat in Arabic. Okay? Yes. Ah. Ah. Ah means? Brother. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Next. Akhbar. Akhbar. It's the same word as we had earlier. Sisters. Now. Next. Asas. 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 Without stretching. Asas. Asas is assets. Assets, belongings of home, your furniture and all that, that's called Asas. I have a question. So, no. Akh was brother. Mm -hmm. So how come they say Akhi? Yes, that, Akhi like, means slang? my brother. No, no. Oh, my. my brother. Remember, sister, this Ya in the end, whenever you see in Arabic, it means my. my. It's a possessive so, pronoun. So you, so if you want to say... Um, I love my brother, you'll say, I hope oh, akhi. Naam, wa hibbu akhi. Oh, yes. And when you will speak, inshallah, you will be very much practice of speaking, then you will not pronounce dhamma in the end. Then, inshallah, you will learn later that in speaking, you do not disclose the last you know, vowel on the word you will say, Ohib. 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 Okay. So, then we have uh, another paragraph, but it is not something very important information, and it is easy, you can understand it yourself, so read it, inshallah, at home later on. Yes, now. Uh, number five, the uh, mm -hmm. Okay, it is not connecting to the tha, it is separate. Because alif is a non-connecting letter. Right? And this is the very first lesson we started the book with that discussion that alif, when it is a long vowel, or in any case, alif is a non-connecting letter. So it cannot be connected to the following letter. Now, if alif is in the middle of a word uh -huh. and has a haraka on it, uh -huh. is that then a hamza? Yes, it is a hamza. Very good. Yes. Then it will be hamza. It will not be the long vowel and that will become a consonant. It will not be the vowel. Yes. What do you mean by that? Haraka means vowel. Vowel. Fatha dhamma kasra. For asas has a fatha on it. No, no. Asas, hamza is in the beginning. No. But in the middle, middle alif has a haraka on it, right? No, middle alif does not have any haraka. So it is just asas. Yes, now. Any this alif long vowel itself it is a duration that you stretch it for two fingers. But there is no fatha kasra dhamma on this alif. Okay? If you put any fatha kasra dhamma, it will become a consonant. Like if you say as as, for example. As as. Then uh, this second alif became a consonant. <laughs> now go to the next page and you have another few Arabic words, six Arabic words. They are starting with Hamza sound, but Hamza has different vowels. U, A, E, all these three. It's a combination of that. So, Brother Tanvir, read the first Arabic word <laughs> Ibhar. <laughs> Ibhar. Can you think about the root of Ibhar? Bahar, yes. Bahar. Are you know the meaning of Bahar? Sea. Ocean. Ocean. Samandar. Bahar. So Ibhar is uh, like you are doing something in the ocean. Hmm? 
So you are sailing the boat. If those people like captain, those who are sailing the boat, that is called ibhar. So that person is called or the... No, the, that work, that action of sailing the boat. Yes. In the sawal. Now, ya talib. Do we have uh, two words for uh, ocean and uh, sea or is just one word? One together? word in Arabic. However, we differentiate in this way the sea that is uh, younger than ocean or shorter than ocean, then we say Buhaira. Buhaira, that is called Tasghir. Like Buhaira Arab. And Muhit also, yes. Hmm. Uh -huh. so, so the word Ibhar means sailing. Sailing, yes. So it could be sailing the river, it could be sailing the sea. Yes, right? yes, yes. Okay. Because the, the root word yes. is sea, right? Exactly. What is the root word of Bahar? Bahar. Yes. Bahar means Samandar. Bahara. Okay. The second word, we already have it. Can you read? Yes. Ukh. Ukh. Ukh means? Sister. Sister. Yes. Sister. Okay. Third word. Yes. Read the third word. Yes. It's Bar. We had this word before also. Does someone remember the meaning? Prove. Prove, yes. To prove something. No. Question for the, 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 you said the akhawat is sisters, right? Uh -huh. And ukht is sisters. So One. how come how come it's, in, first it was coming with a sort of a dhamma, right? The uh -huh. dhamma, the hamza dhamma, right? Mm -hmm. And in the uh, sister, mm -hmm. the single, mm -hmm. it's coming with the uh, kasra and uh, Okay. First, um, first sorry, of all, uh, there is no kasra no, in the no, word. No, no kasra. Uh. I mean, uh, fatha and damma. I will. I mean to say, the the first one, akhwat, is coming with the fatha. Fatha now. Right. Mm -hmm. And the oh, oh, is, is coming, coming with, with damma. damma. Because one is singular, one is plural. You have okay. different pronunciation for singular word. You have different pronunciation for plural word. Okay. Oh, with damma is one sister. Akhwat with fatha is many sisters. You also have wow in a khawat, you do not have that wow in ukh. Right, right. Okay? So it's not akhwat, it's akhwat. 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 Akhwat
when we use the word in the last, right? Uh -huh. I, I see sometimes we use with the with the fatha, and we actually pronounce that fatha. Uh -huh. Like you know, in, in this mm -hmm. example, here, right? Yes, yes. And sometimes when the sentence ended that word, we sort of make a school yes. from that. So how how do we distinguish between this and what is that? Okay, no, there is no rule for that that you are pronouncing this fatha and you are not pronouncing the fatha on the other word. It's not like that. This is a rule of thumb for Arabic. Whenever you are stopping, the last letter becomes sakin by itself automatically. Yes, so so this one also you are allowed, you can say, Ukhrij. Ukhrij. Now, okay. if you are stopping here, but if you are reading in continuation, then you have to uh, pronounce the fatha. So if you say, like for the Egypt, you know, Husni Mubarak, yes yes now now so if you say ukhrija and after that you want to say bil quwa then you say ukhrija bil quwa now and if you want to finish the sentence on ukhrij then you can say ukhrij then you have to bring the word bil quwa in the beginning wa bil quwa husni mubarak ukhrij <laughs> now, uh, again, there is no new information about uh, uh, Hamza, but yes, this paragraph is very important, and I want you to read it to understand it, because several times we are having this question that how to read Arabic uh, words, you know, we have problem in understanding. How are we reading? So they have very good examples from English words. They say that the word, for example, neighbor, you write in English, you spell it. So there are so many letters, N-E-I-G-H-B-O-R. Yeah. But you are not reading it nijubar, something like that, right? Yeah, correct, correct. <laughs> and you are reading any language word by word, not by syllable by syllable, not letter by letter. So the same way you need to develop your uh, habit of reading Arabic, just look the whole word, mm. scan it, and then read it. Do not go in the detail of each letter. Okay? So, Brother Kanishka, read this paragraph. In fully vocalized text, the short vowel will be marked. In unvocalized text, you'll see only the consonant skeleton. Here as elsewhere to read an unvocalized word correctly, you need to know it, or make an educated, educated guess based on knowledge of Arabic word patterns. This will become clear later on. Learn to associate the pronunciation of each new vocabulary item with its constant frame, the same way you associate certain pronunciations in English with certain spellings. Think of neighbor and way, taught and caught. In your native language, you read by, in your native language, you read by word, not by syllable. And it's important to develop the same skill in Arabic. Very good. Next paragraph is about writing Hamza. So it is easy, you know how to write Hamza. So it's not a big deal. Uh, and also they gave you the practice of writing Hamza next page. So you can copy these words. Okay. And this discussion of Hamza is ending on the next page. So we are stopping here. And now, should we stop, the, we are going for the Asar prayer. So I think we should do some uh, speaking practice after the prayer. And we have to leave two things for next time. Okay? Because Hamza discussion was very much important. Very much important. It's a very new information. So I wanted to discuss this in detail and I want that you learn it completely. So Hamza and Alif confusion should be removed. I think uh, it's removed now, right? Okay. So for Arabic numbers, because these are also very important. But so many things you can understand yourself by reading the this, you know, discussion of Arabic numbers. So read yourself, prepare yourself for the next class, and we will go to, inshallah, quickly about numbers. Try to pronounce also these from Sifr to Ashara, they are written in English also, or Arabic words written in English. Sefer Wahid, Isnain Salasa. So I want you to know them 
easily and say like in English say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 like in Arabic. Sifr wahid yithnain salatha arba khamsa sitta saba thamaniya tisa ashara. Okay? And then also practice writing before you come to the class. Since we do not have class on next Sunday, as I earlier announced, so you have now two weeks time for doing this homework. So pay attention on these numbers. And the uh, you do those four letters, Dal, Dal, Raza. Khair, inshallah. And when we come after the Asar prayer, we will do some speaking practice, inshallah.